through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows ekphrastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin. I'm Spencer, and today I'm joined by a local guy who's done well, Isaac Marion, the author of Warm Bodies, uh, the book which the movie that's coming out is based upon. Um, I guess I've described it to friends as a zom rom com. I don't I don't know if that's a, an effective term, but in essence, it's a sort of a romantic story between a zombie and a I don't know what you call them human. Like, um, it's my understanding that the story was based on a short story that you then turned into a novel. What exactly was the genesis of this idea because it's such a unique concept that there could be a relationship between a zombie and a human? Well, the short story that started it was not that. It was just it was a just kind of a brief vignette of, of a zombie talking about life as a zombie in the apocalyptic world. And that idea just kind of came about from I've written a lot of stuff that is from the point of views of kind of unusual things and people and, and outsiders from humanity in some way or another, like inanimate objects or just anything that, that kind of gives an opportunity to look at things in life from a from a, a different perspective and kind of creates interesting results. So I thought I would just try it with that because I'd never seen that done before and and it always kind of bothered me. I kind of, I, whenever I watch a zombie movie or anything involving that creature, I'm not really interested in like how do they get away from it. I, I find myself just thinking like, well, what what is it thinking? Like, what why is it uh, why is it chasing them? Like, how, what, what does it think is happening in in its world? I think you actually hit upon something that I was thinking about when I was heading into this interview. And you know, I'm I'll admit I'm a little bit. Um, worn down on the zombie genre. You know, there's a lot of good stuff. You know, Walking Dead's very good. But for the most part, a lot of those stories are more of people stories within a zombie apocalypse type setting and less of a sort of zombie story. So sort of, I feel like a lot of the times zombies are just sort of the same thing time and time again. It's right. it's only when there's that unique story that's told. And your 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 story kind of actually, and, and this is probably one of the weirdest comparisons you'll get, um, reminded me of Cloverfield. Because instead of like your classic monster movie approach where, you know, you're sort of this omnipotent presence looking down on it, it was the first time it put you inside of a monster movie and like this is what that experience would be like yeah. and I really enjoyed it for that reason similar your story is the first time I, I I mean I no expert on zombies don't get me wrong but I think that's the first time I had ever experienced a zombies point of view I mean that I thought was almost an amazing concept in of itself that you're like okay why don't, why don't we hear what he's think I mean, how did you go about sort of capturing the experience from a zombie's perspective? Well, I think part of the reason that you don't see that often is that people and a lot of zombie purists are outraged because of this. They'll say you, you can't have a zombie perspective because they don't think they're mindless monsters. But that whole idea doesn't really make any sense when you think about it because they are they have to be thinking they know chase humans don't eat zombies they know like brains are good or, or in what depending on what what story you're talking about so there's clearly something going on they're not just pure reflex because they they have they travel in packs like they do all these things that require some form of reasoning so it's not really they don't they don't go into it that much but to me it was just like well there's clearly some, there would have to be something going on and they don't talk, they don't interact with humans, so you don't you don't find out about it. But basically, where it started was just what what's the in, in, inner monologue there? Like what what would if I was in this role, what would lead me to do these things? Like what kind of thought processes would I go through that would tell me go hunt people and and eat their brains? And like what you know, what would it feel like to be that? And I tried to make it not it's not like a total reinvention of the concept of a zombie it, it, on the surface. They do the same things that all zombies do in, in, in those kind of stories. It's just that 
hearing their side of it, you find out that it's not that they're mindless. It's just they don't give a shit about what's expressing themselves. So they see a human, they're just like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat him. They don't be like, hey, talk to me. I have, I have thoughts because they don't think, they don't care. They're just completely jaded and disillusioned to everything but their basic urges. But that doesn't mean they don't have thoughts. Have you gotten some pushback from zombie purists who are like, your your story's not zombie enough for us? Like, is that is that actually something that occurs? I've gotten a lot of really entertaining hate mail um, from, oddly enough, not very articulate people uh, are the ones. (laughs) I don't know if that's oddly. (laughs) They they seem to be the most vocal. Are the ones that can't uh, communicate their thoughts very well. And it's been really fun to have that uh material i've i've read uh dramatic performances of some of those hate mails oh, at at, at book readings and uh that's a good laugh for everyone cuz they there's there's a certain idea that that i don't know how you can think this and and uh think that you're a reasonable person but like that that they think that zombies are real basically and that mm. they have to be a certain way uh, so they'll, that, yeah. they'll be like that's medically impossible for a zombie to have thoughts <laughs> because they don't have blood flow to their brain and i'm like medically this is <laughs> that's, a magically that's point, reanimated yeah. corpse that runs without any fuel you know that if it's a dead body it can't digest meat so clearly it doesn't have a metabolism that is you know providing energy so it's it's magic like it, it doesn't really work that's otherwise. outstanding yeah, so, that's outstanding in terms of like turning it into a film what was your sort of response when that whole process began did you ever conceive it to be a movie or was this always just like you know i'd be excited if i could get a book published i yeah. you know I, and then all of a sudden all this other stuff came along but what what is that experience like for you know a young author as yourself it was definitely i just want a book published i mean i, I certainly didn't didn't write it thinking, oh, it'll be great when this is a movie. I mean, that doesn't, that doesn't happen. That's not, uh, it wasn't even on my radar or anywhere. I just, I, I've been writing since I was 14 and, you know, have a whole pile of rejection letters collected. And, and <laughs> I just wanted like something to happen, get some foot in the door, even if it was like a little book on some obscure indie press that would mm. only be published in Seattle or something. I just wanted something published so that I could have that and then try to develop it from there. And I, I assumed that I would continue to be on a, on a low scale, you know, would be still doing a day job and just struggling to get the word out about this for a long time. Uh, probably several more books before I would be able to, uh, to, you know, do it full time or anything. So that happening was just a total blindside and, and was really surreal and just amazing. And it's, I mean, Honestly, I'll say this, as I said before, you know, this is one of the first sort of zombie films that's really reinvigorated me. I mean, since probably Zombieland was the last time I really was enjoying a zombie project. And, you know, I guess something like this very easily could have become like an indie film. I mean, there's definitely some bigger elements to the production, but, you know, it's a huge Production. This is not like just a yeah. small budget film. You got a fantastic cast. I mean, Nicholas Holt, uh, John Malkovich, all these people who are known players in Hollywood are involved with this. Jonathan Levine directing it. Like, this is a significant project. At what point are you just sort of like pinching yourself as this is going on, being like, wait a minute, this <laughs> this can't actually like play out this way. You know, this yeah. this feels like this is going too fast for this. <laughs> Well, it was it was kind of a gradual realization as it as as it came together. I mean, at first I figured it probably would be a fairly indie thing. I mean, I knew that Summit isn't really an, an indie uh, studio, but they're they're sort of in between. They're not like DreamWorks or anything. So I didn't really know how much they were going to put into it as far as budget or just effort. I didn't I thought they might just be kind of trying to squeeze it out and to like cash in on the, the zombie craze or something and. Um, but as it came together and as they started to cast it and, and sort of seen, see, reading the scripts and reading the descriptions of, you know, the fact that like, they weren't turning the, the vast ruined airport into like a coffee shop or something like they were really going <laughs> for it. And, uh, so a- as it came together, it was started to become more apparent to me that, that they were doing like a real movie that people would know about. And then of course, when they cast John Malkovich, it was like, okay, they're, they're serious <laughs> yeah. about this. Like, this is going to be promoted and, and uh, people will know about it. And 
So it was a pretty incredible process. And all my friends and people and family, you know, they, I think they were assuming the same thing, probably even more so. Like whenever I tell someone, it was kind of funny, the, the progression of the conversation. It'd be like, yeah, I wrote a book. And you're like, oh, so is it like, like a local indie press that like, can you buy it in bookstores? And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's national and you can find it anywhere. Like, oh, that's cool. And, and, and there's a movie. Oh, like, so like one of your friends filmed it and, and they just kind of go through these steps in the point where eventually you're know, like, oh, so who's in it? Like some buddies of yours or something? He's like, well, John Malkovich is in it. And then, oh, okay. <laughs> so, so it's a real thing. I mean, I think it's something, you know, you spoke about when you're answering that question, you know, you thought that it might, you know, change the airport to say a coffee shop or something like that. Mm -hmm. What is it, what was sort of the final product like versus what you had sort of initially imagined it? Did it end up sort of capturing what you were hoping it would be? Or, I mean, were you involved in sort of tweaking various things throughout the project? How involved were you once it became, you know, a film? I was involved as far as consultant role kind of involvement I mean I wasn't co-writing the script I wasn't in there in their staff meetings saying like no I don't like this do this but <laughs> they would they would they would check in with me at various stages like because they were casting you know here's some people were thinking about and and like the, when he was writing the script he would call me and and every once in a while and ask him like ask me uh, you know how do you what does this part mean or, or how do you envision this this city or something and, and uh, so and then I, I got to read the actual script and give notes on it as you know as as detailed as I want. I don't know how much they they actually wanted, but sure. I, I just said whatever was whatever <laughs> occurred to me, and um, they seemed to 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 care. I mean, they, it wasn't just a, a gesture. Like they they sent me an early draft of the script, and then they I gave them a lot of notes on it, and they they didn't kick me out at that point. They sent me another draft, and then they brought me in to see the a rough cut of the movie and give feedback on that and and some of the stuff a lot of stuff has been changed and some of them were specific things that I mentioned so it seems like they actually cared what I thought and as far as the the end result I it's it's surprisingly faithful overall I mean mm -hmm. I, things always change in adaptations sure. they they compress things they cut things they have to change things in order to make those cuts work and and sort of just the general feel will get will get altered somewhat. Like it, it, it's a little more heavy on the comedy than the book, where mm. the book has the comedy, but it's it's emphasized a little more in the film and just kind of subtle adjustments in tone like that. But in the overall picture, I feel like it's it's it captures the spirit of it and some of the ideas. I mean, I I, I mean, I can't. I've never read the book yet, and. I, I actually, because of the film, might actually go around to do it, which is a cool. pretty big statement because I'm <laughs> terrible about reading. Yeah. But one of the more interesting characters to me, and I mean, you probably get this a lot, was the character of M, mm -hmm. played by Rob Corddry. And I tend to not be a huge Rob Corddry enthusiast <laughs> because I feel like he does over the top way too much. And it kind of, it's sort of like Will Ferrell, you know, it yeah. kind of burns me out a little bit. Um, but this is quite possibly my favorite role he's ever done. Was the character of M sort of as you imagined him in the book? Because he's sort of, I don't know what you want to describe, a, um, he's, he's definitely a comedic element in the film, but he also has this very nice sort of dramatic, sweet uh, mm -hmm. tone to him as well. Is that, is that something you had yeah, worked on? I, I think that, that's one of my favorite things that, that was preserved in the book is that he is sort of the comic relief and he's like the best friend character, but he has his own story, which is pretty, it's pretty rare to see a best friend character in a movie in scenes without the main character in it, where he's sure, having totally. his own little moments like yeah. that. That seemed really fresh to me that they were able to pull that off. And in the book, I mean, physically he's described a lot different, but as far as his personality, I mean, the humor was uh, important, not even just to his character, but kind of to the plot and that, that the narrator mentions at one point, like he's, one of the only zombies I know who's retained some sense of humor. Like he, mm. he makes these kind of, it's hard to make a joke when you can only do a couple syllables at a time, but he has these little kind of remnants of, of a, of a comedic uh, style in, in the book. So it, uh, yeah, as far as his character arc is pretty much exactly how it plays out. And, you know, I mean, I don't know, as a young author, young filmmaker, um, I've heard rumblings about, doing a second one you know obviously that depends on how successful the film is and whatnot was there any pressure to 
write it or keep it sort of open at the end that you could theoretically do a sequel if you wanted? Or was that something that you always had intended? Or, you know, I, I mean, I would imagine that that's something that Hollywood is very uh, interested is things that they can then turn into franchises. And, yeah. you know, now that Twilight's gone, will this be yeah. the new thing? I mean, well, I mean, I didn't know there was going to be a movie when I was writing it. So there was certainly no no pressure from anyone there. Uh, the way that I wrote it, I mean, it, it ends somewhat open-endedly, but mm-hmm. at the time, I never thought that I would be able to do a sequel. I, I had ideas for where it would go and kind of a larger picture of the world that, that gets sort of hinted at in the book but not really explored, and also kind of what the end result of this process, because they sort of set in motion a, a series of changes in the story, which ends with that process in motion but it's mm-hmm. not over that they're, they're not they didn't sure. win yeah, or anything no, totally. so it, it yeah at the time i didn't think that i was going to do a sequel just because i didn't think anyone would want one I, I i was just hoping for the book to get published and i never thought there would be uh, uh fans that were interested in the, seeing the story finished so it uh it wasn't that i was leaving it open for a sequel it's just that that's where the story needed to end and uh i wasn't going to tell like the the whole completion of this revolution of humanity and <laughs> they don't want to do like book. the lord of the rings yeah, exactly. zombie movies. <laughs> right um in terms of like you as an author obviously you said you've done previous things that receive rejection letters and whatnot do you feel like because of the success of this project you've sort of been classified as like a zombie guy do you feel like you want to i don't know for your next project or whatever try and break outside of that classification because you know oh he was so successful doing zombies yeah. you know he's he's now a zombie guy or do you want to you know strike while the iron is hot and just continue working on this as much as you can i definitely don't want to be the zombie guy that's not who I ever was before this and I don't want to be after this like the, the this story is kind of a it's an anomaly in 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 most of my work is, is that it, I don't I don't usually write about well-known pop culture things like that I don't do like all the stuff I write has some genre elements in uh-huh. it they're not just like straight up dry literary kind of stuff but they're they all they're kind of literary in style and tone but they're always is some kind of surreal twist to it some kind of some kind of fantasy element is included even if it's like about people and growing up in my hometown or something they, they, there's always some twist to it but but yeah I don't normally do things that that have an obvious genre to put them in so I don't really feel that this does either if you actually read it but on the surface it does so people throw it in those categories well, and as, as I said you know for me like I feel like the more interesting zombie projects usually are about people just with a yeah. backdrop of zombies. And this is one of the first times I would actually say that I've seen a zombie film with zombies in the foreground, which yeah. in and of itself is a very unique thing. Yeah. I mean, you said you've done lots of scripts before. Do you feel any sort of pressure now to have a big hit your next time out? Because, I mean, I'm not trying yeah. to put pressure on no. you, but it's, it seems like, you know, oh, you get a, a, like, this is your first published novel and it's turned into a film. Like, it feels like there's sort of an element of like, oh, if you just get it published, it's like, what, what did I do wrong? <laughs> like, do, yeah. you, do, you, do you just look at it and go like, I'm just happy to be here? Or are you just like, okay, I have to, I have to succeed the next time around? I think the pressure that I feel is not so much to make it another big hit as it is to just improve upon what I already did and make sure it's like if I'm doing a a sequel or conclusion to this story like it needs to build on on the on the previous book and improve and and go further with it so I don't want it to be a retread of the of the book and I as far as the success level that would be great if it happened again I mean that certainly something I want to happen but on the other hand I don't know I don't know if you can if you can always do what you really feel is the best story and and what you want to really write and uh, achieve that kind of that kind of uh, appeal because it's with that book I feel like I kind of got lucky I didn't intend to write a really accessible book it just sort Mm -hmm. of happened but the sequel that I'm working on is not as obviously commercial. It doesn't have it as as uh, as clear of an of a an appeal that's as clear to communicate, and mm-hmm. it's going to be 
more complex and darker and um which is, is just funny because it's making me think of um jurassic park i actually remember reading that book just because i wanted to read it before it came out uh in theaters and that book was so dense and complex <laughs> like they literally had yeah. pages just of zeros and ones in it <laughs> and i was like oh my god this, this is a great book but it's like there's so much complex here yeah and then you look at the lost world by Michael Crane, the, the sequel to it, and he almost wrote that to be a movie <laughs> script. Like, they should have yeah. actually just taken that book and made it into a movie <laughs> instead of, like, messing with it. Yeah, I definitely it, don't want to do that. It's, it's kind of interesting, though, that you, you want to sort of challenge yourself instead of just, I don't know, taking the easy route and just going with the flow. Yeah, I, I would be content just not having to get a job again. That's basically, the, that's the baseline for <laughs> that's me. That's pretty like, awesome, if, yeah. If I can get another book published and have it sell enough to just continue writing uh, comfortably, that's really my only uh, requirement. If, if anything beyond that is is bonus, and if writing the book that I feel is the best book is going to drop me down to that base level, I'm okay with that. I would hope I'd rather it continue to escalate, but. You bring we'll up see. a really interesting point, though. Are you interested in continuing working in the literary world? Or are you? I mean, there's obviously so many authors who write something that becomes a movie, and then they just you know move yeah. to Hollywood and start writing scripts for everything. Do mm. you? Is there something inherent about the novel that you like working on, or is there? Is, are you thinking about you know writing more screenplays or something like that? Well, I haven't written a screenplay before. Before this, I mean, I wrote. Sure. I did. I wrote one. After I finished Warm Bodies, my, the next thing that I did was just I, I wanted to try it, so I wrote a screenplay that unrelated to, to any of this stuff. But um, I I don't I like what I what I wrote. I th I think it's a good script, but I don't really enjoy the process of doing it nearly as much as I do writing prose. I, th I think there's just there's the um, it's much more limiting and, and restrictive. You have to be it has to be like these certain exact length and mm -hmm. it has certain things have to happen by these points or people will say like they can't ever sell this it's too, it's too unconventional and and you don't really have the freedom to let your imagination run wild because you don't really get to describe things like every word counts you, you it's really hard to tell a, a, a story in in like the equivalent of maybe 20 pages of, of book formatting so it's it's just it's frustrating like i it has some advantages i enjoyed being able to to use visual and and sound elements as storytelling techniques whereas you can't really pull that off with a book there's something beautiful about Im imagination though just letting yeah. people picture it in their own minds i mean yeah. i i think you'd be hard pressed to find too many projects where you're like the film is better than yeah. the book the biggest thing for me is that the actual writing of the of the the storytelling, the prose itself, is very mechanical for a script. It doesn't. It it's supposed to convey what's happening, but you don't get to be poetic with it. Mm -hmm. You don't get to, you know, use words as sort of a, a, a technique of of communicating what's happening. And that's a big part of all my writing is that I, I write in a fairly lyrical style, and that's kind of what I enjoy most is just using words in in ways that make rhythm and feeling. And you don't get to do any of that in a script, so. In the script, the only place that I could really use that type of technique is in these kind of weird dialogue sequences mm. where, um, where there's like a mechan a electronic voice talking or something, and it was like Man, I don't want to do more of this. Like I like I like playing with words, uh, that's awesome. so I, I probably won't go back to it. I'm guessing. Uh, you know, now that you've had this success, I, I mean, I'm sure you're probably going to be occupied for a while doing the press tours for this film and whatnot until it comes out and on February 1st. What, what do you have next? Is there something that we can, as people who've enjoyed this project and want to see what you have come out next, is there something that we can stay tuned for? I mean, you spoke about working on a sequel to Warm yep. Bodies. Is that the next thing to expect from you? Are there other things, you know, percolating somewhere that we might yeah. stay tuned for? There is another thing that is sort of a, an interlude in between Warm Bodies and this sequel, which is coming out at the end of this month, actually. It's, huh. it's a novella, which is a prequel to to Warm Bodies, and um, it kind of sets up, foreshadows some of what's going to happen in the sequel, and um, it's about sort of a, a, an early encounter in all these characters' early lives and and early deaths, in, in, in some cases, maybe. 
Um, so that is, like, I've been, I just finished writing that oh, cool. really recently and they're trying to release it as an ebook before the movie mm-hmm. comes out and then hopefully print edition sometime to follow. But that's kind of, uh, what the next thing is and that will, that will lead into the, the proper sequel. And where can people find more ab- out about you? I know you have a Twitter, which is, was it mm-hmm. Isaac Marion? Isaac just in space. At, at, Isaac in space. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you have a website or anything else that people should? Yeah, follow? I have uh, IsaacMarion.com is sort of a generic website that isn't updated that often. And then I have a blog called BurningBuilding.com. Uh, pretty much all the social networks. I've got a Facebook fan page, Instagram, Tumblr. Awesome. <laughs> Anywhere you look for my name, it'll show up probably. Awesome. Um, well, good luck with Warm Bodies. I look forward to seeing what's coming out. And uh, check it out February 1st nationwide, I believe. Yep. Okay. Awesome. And uh, check out more interviews at MacGuffinPodcast.com. Thanks. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's don't even try to bite the sun. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.